okay uh, good evening everyone so today we will discuss about a uh, few application services available on aws platform so coming to these application services these services can be integrated with different different applications and the applications can utilize these application services to process some kind of a request let us say that developers will design some kind of applications right so the applications will be integrated with these application services so that the developed applications can utilize these services amazon will provide you different types of application services out of those we have to discuss about a few application services the first one is simple notification service which we call it as sns and the second one is simple queue service which is sqs and the third one is simple email service which is ses and the fourth one is elastic transcoder these are the application services which we need to discuss for the solutions architect and out of all these the one and three can be used on a day to day activities being a solutions architect you are responsible for configuring the sns and ses coming to this sks it can be used by the developers and the devops team elastic transcoder that can be used by a uh, different different teams who is into the media streaming whoever is going to stream that videos they will use the elastic transcoder so in today's session uh, we will discuss about all these four without knowing about the sns already we have used this as sns in different different applications like one is cloudwatch yesterday we used this sns to receive an email alert whenever the cpu utilization is more than 60% and in our first uh, few sessions we created a billing alarm in that also we used the sns now we will discuss in detail about the simple notification service <clears throat> so first let us start with the simple notification service so coming to this sns simple notification service is called as a sns sns is an amazon managed subscription based service sns is an amazon managed subscription based service which can send and notifications we can write down in such a way that sns is aws managed notification service which is a subscription based service what is the meaning of a subscription based service forget about this aws what is the meaning of a subscription or a subscription based service paid even ec2 is also a paid right subscription based service is not a kind of a paid service might be they might charge you but what exactly the meaning of the subscription based pay and use on a aws every service is pay and use right there must be some technical uh, meaning about the subscription based service what is that period of subscription no okay so have you ever seen if you log into any online stores online stores have you ever seen like subscribe to newsletter have you seen such kind of options subscribe to newsletter or subscribe to uh, subscribe for promotional offer such kind of things let us say there are 100 users on an online store and assume that only 20 people selected the checkbox called subscribe to offers at the time of account creation there will be one option or checkbox called subscribe to newsletter or subscribe to promotional offers whoever select the option only they will receive 
then uh, what we call that the promotional offers or the newsletters from that particular company the other 80 people won't get that means whoever subscribe to that particular kind of a service only they will get utilize or they will get the advantage of that particular service or in a simple terms i think everybody um, aware of the ott services right we have uh, amazon prime and everything without paying the money can you install that particular amazon prime or aha or whatever it is yes you can but without taking the subscription you cannot utilize that complete app if they are providing some kind of a free movies or free programs you can watch them but with the subscription only you can get the subscription based movies in the same way whoever subscribe to a particular service like sending a promotional offers or sending in uh, regular newsletters only they will receive so here whoever subscribe to this particular sns only they will receive that particular notifications even yesterday at the time of creating the cloud watch we created the sns topic that is called as a topic sns contains a topic topic is nothing but a list of a topic contains a list of user email addresses how it looks like is let us say i would like to send uh, or uh, do you know like yahoo groups have you ever uh, seen yahoo groups i think now they are not available or i think whatsapp groups are there right what is the use if you send one message to the group everybody will receive the same message no need to send the same message to each and every individual and the message will not be delivered to the person who is not a part of that particular group so in the same way here what we can do is we can create a topic in the subscription based service any kind of a subscription based service it will get a topic topic means uh, they will create some kind of a name like a uh, promotional offers they will create a topic called a promotional offers so the users has to subscribe to that particular topic whenever a user subscribe his email address will be added like this or p at the rate gmail.com c at the rate xyz.com like this only whoever subscribe to this topic those email addresses will be added here and the users will get a confirmation notification once they click on confirm then only they will be 100% subscribed to the topic in this case if you would like to send an email to all these four people no need to add or no need to send the email individually to all these four email addresses what we can do is we can send an email to this particular topic so that the same email will be delivered to each and every email address added into the top let us say if i add your email address to here like this so you will receive one notification on your email if you click on confirm then only you will start receiving the email uh, notifications and all the things the simple thing is whoever subscribe to the topic only they will receive the notifications so if someone is not subscribed he will not get any email notifications from that particular service so here sns contains a topic topic is a list of email addresses whoever subscribed to the topic only the subscribed email addresses will receive the email notifications from the simple notification service only the subscribed list of email addresses will receive the email notifications how this sns work is sns will broadcast the message sns will broadcast the message and it doesn't care about the message has been 
delivered to the recipient or not blindly it will send the emails it won't get any acknowledgement or delivery confirmation here like if you see the radios right how the radios will work the radio station will broadcast the signals and it does they, they will not care about every radio is receiving the signal or not just blindly they will broadcast like these walkie talkies right what it will do or even mobile phones right just they will broadcast the data they don't care about like whether the recipient is able to receive your messages or not in the olden days we have a type of a network communication called udp user datagram protocol but now every application is is using the tcp what is that you Okay, so in the olden days, uh, all the applications were used a protocol called UDP. Like, let us say, if I am sending a like, uh, or a best example is the courier service. In the Indian postal, there is a regular a post and a speed post or something, right? In the regular post, you don't receive any acknowledgement, but in the registered post, you will receive an acknowledgement that the recipient has been successfully received the item or not. And if the recipient is not present, who picked or who got delivery of that particular item. Every information is available, right? In the same way, the simple notification service will not be able to deliver the message 100%. Blindly, it will forward. Blindly, it will forward and it doesn't care about whether the message has been received by the recipient or not. But we have a different type of, types of services available nowadays to get an acknowledgement also. So the simple notification service is only able to broadcast the message and it doesn't care about the message has been received by the recipient or not. But 99% the messages will not fail, but sometimes there is a chance due to some technical issues or something. If the message fail to deliver, it will not reinitiate the same process to deliver the same message. I will give a simple example. Let us say you have a kind of a server which can handle only 10 instructions at a time. What if you are sending 20 instructions per second? Because of overloading, it might not be able to handle all the requests, right? At least five or six messages might be missed and those messages cannot be delivered. So to handle such kind of a request, Amazon is providing you a service called simple queue service in the name itself it contains a queue system right so before discussing about that let me explain how this simple queue service works so to understand this better let us say uh, you have a uh, two different servers uh, in your infrastructure you have a uh, two servers so here there is one server and here you have uh, a tool that can be any kind of a tool. This is a tool, let us say, and this is some kind of a server. This is a kind of a server and there are some users. What they do is they will upload some images, high quality images. 
Now, what this server will do is the job of this server is convert the image or compress the image, and that image has to be stored on some kind of a storage. For compression, they might use some tool, right? What it will do whenever the uh, it receives an image, it will blindly send a message to the tool, and this tool can handle two images at a time. Based on the capacity, it can handle two images at a time. It cannot process more than two. It will compress the image, and the image will be stored into the S3. At some point of time, this user uploaded five images at a time. So two images will be processed by the tool, and let us say it has some uh, memory or cache or something. It can store two messages in the queue. But what about the fifth one? The fifth one might get failed, or or let us say only one image is getting processed here. One image is only sent. It has the capacity of two. Now what it will do? The tool will compress the image. Then before uploading it to the S3 bucket. it has some technical issue and it was unable to place that image into the s3 bucket that information will not be known by the server right what the server will think the image has been processed and had to, that has to be stored on s3 bucket in the reality that image was compressed and while storing into the s3 bucket it got failed so there is no copy of that image in the s3 bucket and the server will think that the image has been processed and the original image will be deleted so how to avoid this kind of a situation is in between the server and the tool they will use a queue system they will use a queue system let us say here it is getting five images all the five images will be stored like this initially they will be maintained in the queue they will be maintained in the queue it will not send any message to the tool so here we can call it as a sender because it is sending the images and it is called as a receiver which is receiving the image and which is processing now here the receiver tool is like designed by the developer or something right so they will design that this receiver has to go to the so on so queue system it has to pick the image this is called as pole based system polling it will not push any message to the receiver it will maintain all the messages in the queue the receiver will come and it will be allocated with the image 1 image 1 will be allocated to the receiver once the image has been received this will be this will not be available in the queue but it will not be deleted immediately when the message will be deleted is once the receiver come back to the queue system and if it acknowledges that the image has been compressed and it has been stored into the s3 bucket then only the message one will be deleted but till then it will not maintain the message in the queue because here there might be having two different tools right two different tools if the message is available in the queue itself already the message is assigned to the receiver one if again the same message is processed by the receiver two there will be a duplication right that's why once the message has been assigned to one receiver the message will be applied with uh, what we call that Requ uh, time out time out that means by default the time out will be 5 minutes for the 5 minutes this will be maintained somewhere else it will be removed from the queue and it will be maintained in the backend so that no other receiver can pick the same message for the processing now this tool will compress the image once it is done it will store into the s3 bucket and then it will go back to the queue system that i am done with the processing of the one message then it will delete after 5 minutes after 5 minutes or within 5 minutes if the receiver is unable to come back to the queue system and if it will not give the acknowledgement that the message was processed successfully again the message one will be added to the queue so that the other recipient or other tool will pick the same message and 
and it will process the same message. So in this queue system, you will have a guaranteed delivery of the message at least once. At least once delivery is guaranteed in the queue system. Because of that, at least once, you might receive the same message twice. Because it will maintain for five minutes, right? By any chance, if this tool will take more than five minutes to compress, with after five minutes, five minutes, one second, the message will be allocated to the recipient too. After six minutes, this tool completed the process and it will up upload the image. But already the message one is processing by the recipient too. In that case, there is a possibility that the same message can be delivered twice. Sometimes if you withdraw some money or do some kind of online transaction from your banks, you might receive the same message twice, right? The same message twice. That is because of they will use at least once delivery. If they, if they don't get the acknowledgement that the message has been delivered to you, again, the same message will be processed and the message will be delivered to you. And even every banking will maintain this kind of a queue system. I'm not saying that they will use the AWS SQS. They will use a different, different types of queue systems to process all the requests without fail. Because this tool can handle only two requests at a time. But what if it is getting like three or four or five requests per second? They has to be maintained in a queue system so that one by one, every instruction or message will be completed. So this is pole based system. Whereas the SNS is push based system. SNS is a push based system. You can write down that point as SNS is push based service. Whereas the coming to the queue system SQS, this is also AWS manage queue service, which will maintain instructions in a queue. And SQS is a pole based service that the receivers will come to the queue and pick the request to process. And SQS will provide at least once delivery. Because of this, we might receive the same message twice sometimes, not all the time, sometimes. Sometimes we might receive the same message twice. Message is not only a text message or something, some kind of instruction to execute, or some kind of uh, thing to start, stop, whatever it is. Any kind of a, in, uh, what we call that, any kind of a request or an instruction. Instruction means just do this or do that, that kind of instructions. Let us say if someone gave you like three different instructions at a time, you cannot follow that, right? What you will do, you will uh, wrote down them on a, new, on, on a notepad, notepad and you can complete one by one. Once you are done with any request, you will mark that as completed the same way with the SQS. And this SQS is a developer and a DevOps tool. Every DevOps person will use this SQS if they are using AWS. If they are using different things, they can use some third party tools or any kind of a queue system they can use. But the ultimate thing is they need to process all the instructions without fail and with at least one delivery, at least that message to be delivered once, or at least that instruction to be executed once. That is what the advantage of the queue system. And then the simple email service, which is SES. So here to do this simple email service, we have to use uh, what we call that. We must have a domain name. Without having a domain name, we cannot do the 
what we call that uh, we cannot do uh, this practical but we can use this simple email service by using our personal email address but the process will be completely different okay what is this simple email service what is this ses service what it will do it will send notification no have you ever heard about like smtp server smtp server smtp stands for simple mail transfer protocol what is the use of that smtp okay you are using gmail right so in the gmail you can receive email and you can send an email right to send an email smtp service will be used to receive the email imap service will be used every email server will contain imap uh, sending email or sending server uh, email sender and email receiver in the olden days there used to be called a pop 3 server pop 3 service to receive the emails but nowadays no one is using that pop 3 protocol which is a post office protocol now everyone is using imap for receiving the emails and smtp to send emails but already we have uh, email addresses email services for your company then why to use this simple email service or what is the exact advantage of having an smtp server ses will provide an smtp server or service on aws platform now the question is what is the use of the smtp service even gmail will have a smtp service like if you go to google and if you say a uh, gmail smtp server this is the smtp email server smtp.gmail.com on this particular url google's mail server which is used to send the emails will running outgoing mail server incoming mail server is imap they will run on a different ports and this will be run at different ports now the question is what is the necessity of maintaining an smtp server <clears throat> i think uh, everyone is using gmail right what if you forget your password what you will do click on forget password then like they might ask you some secret questions or something or they will send you one password reset link who will send that password reset link is there any person who will log into their outlook or their G, uh, email server and they will send no there will be an automated right while the application is designed they will use some kind of a functionality to send an email how the email will be sent it has to be communicated with the mail server so to send the email smtp server will be required so you can say like why don't i why don't we use the gmail's smtp server by using the gmail per day you can send 200 emails you cannot send more than 200 emails but this smtp server can provide you unlimited number of emails so in the application at the time of designing they will include the smtp server details that smtp server you have to maintain in your office so instead of maintaining in your office amazon is providing you the same smtp server in the aws platform let us say your company name is abc.com okay and that is a kind of website is there and everybody will uh, register on your website the moment once they register an account on your website you will send an email right like welcome to abc.com or something what have you ever seen like what is the from email address that you will receive the emails like you might see like no reply at the rate abc.com have you ever tried to send an email to this particular email address have you ever tried to send an email to such kind of email mess email addresses you cannot send because let us say if that email address belongs to you to receive an email from that particular email address you must have an inbox that is called as a mailbox smtp server will not provide any mailbox which cannot store any emails so smtp server is only to send the email 
So now what I do is I will configure like from email to be this so that whenever the user click on forget password, so that he will receive a link on his email address and the sender will be this one. Automatically, the application will try to send an email as this Two will be your email address and from will be this, but to trigger an email, it must be able to communicate with SMTP server. So in the application, they will configure SMTP server details. Uh, how they looks like is uh, smtp.abc.com or something that doesn't matter. And they will have a port number. So what is our responsibility is our responsibility is to provide the SMTP server details, port number and username and password. Our responsibility is to maintain these details and the development team will use these details with their particular applications. And we don't have any domain name. So what I do is all the emails will be sent from my email address. I can configure like my email address. But while sending the email, I am not using Google's SMTP server. Without using the Google's mail server, I will use Amazon's SMTP server to send the emails. And this SES, SES accounts, or I can say there are two different types of SES accounts. There are two types of SES accounts. One is a sandbox environment. And the second one is production environment. Sandbox environment and production environment. Both will be used to send the emails only. In the sandbox environment, there will be some restrictions applied. In the production environment, no restrictions. No restrictions in the production environment. What kind of restrictions are there? Maximum number of emails to be sent per day. And every recipient must confirm their email address. Every recipient must confirm their email address. Without a confirmation, you cannot send an email. But in the production environment, no need to verify the recipient email address because every day I would like to send thousands of marketing emails. I cannot ask all the, uh, everybody confirm your email address or verify your email address, right? They cannot verify to receive the marketing emails. That is the restriction in the sandbox environment. By default, in your AWS account, whatever the environment available on SES is the sandbox environment. You have to convert that sandbox environment into a production environment. I can say that by default, sandbox environment will be available on SES. We need to convert the sandbox into production. We have to convert that manually. I will show you how to do that. Once we are done with that, we can see something called bounce rate and all the things. So here, what I would like to do is send emails to different email addresses using from my email address. But in general, if you own a domain name, you have to verify your domain name like abc.com so that automatically you can use any from email address. But I don't have an email address. So here, I'm, uh, I don't have a domain name. So I'm going to use my email address. So the first step, what we have to do is verify the email address or I can say verify the from email address.
verify the from email address, then create SES credentials, create SES credentials, which will provide you username, password, and then note down the SMTP server details. Now send test email to uh, different email addresses. So here we have a two different environments available, right? What is the first one? Sandbox environment. In the sandbox environment, every recipient email address must be verified. Without verification, you cannot send any email to the recipient in the sandbox environment. Production environment, no need to verify the recipient email address. Let us say you are trying to receive the email. I am sending an email to you. So in the sandbox environment, I have to request you to verify your email address. That means you are okay to receive the email. But in the production environment, I don't need your consent. Directly, I can send an email to anybody. But what I have to do is I have to verify the from email address. In the production, I have to verify only from. But in the sandbox, I have to verify from and to also. From means sender, to is a receiver. Once we are done with this, then we can see how to upgrade or how to convert the sandbox environment into the production environment. Even for that also, you need to have a valid domain name. Without having a valid domain name, you cannot convert the sandbox environment into the production environment. They will ask you like, what is your domain name and all the things the website URL, if you have any websites and you need to provide a description for what purpose you are using that. You can say like to send the monitoring alerts or to send something else. You can, uh, you can mention that you are, you, you are going to use that SES. So as part of your jobs, like we, you are responsible to create the SES account. But this configuration part that will be taken care by whoever is going to use those credentials. You are responsible to provide the credentials, username and password, SMTP server details, and the from email address. But generally in the real time, we don't verify the email address. You will verify your entire domain name like abc.com. So they can use anything like no reply at abc.com xyz at the rate abc.com, 123 at abc.com. They can use any email address in the domain name as from. Okay, now let me log into our Amazon account. In the search box, type SES, Amazon Simple Email Service. Click on that Amazon Simple Email Service and it will take you to the dashboard of SES service. And here click on account dashboard. And what is the message here? Your Amazon SES account is in the sandbox environment. We are using sandbox. So you can request production access. But for now we are not doing that. Just we will complete the remaining things. So what is the first one? We have to send an e uh, send emails to different email addresses. For that, first we need to verify either your company's domain name or your email address. I don't have any domain name, so I need to verify my email address. That email address or the domain name is called as identity. On the left side, under configuration, click on verified identities and click on create identity. So if you are the owner of the domain, let us say you are the owner, then you have to select the domain and you need to provide 
abc.com domain name whatever you are, whatever the domain name you have you have to provide that so they will ask you to create some records over there like a c name record or text record something and you have to create in your route 53 based on that they will identify that you are the owner of that particular domain name and now we don't have any domain name that's why i will select email address this will be the email address from which we are going to send the email addresses i can type my email address and just you have to click on create identity and the identity has been created but which is not yet verified verification pending i said some email address how amazon knows that i am the owner of that particular email address let us say if that email address belongs to you and if i mentioned your email address in my account if the amazon is not verifying this every email which i send they will be sent as you like you are sending those email addresses that's why they will verify the identity whether i am the owner of this email address or not so how they will verify is you have to go to that particular provided email address and you can see there is one email got received email address verification request so you have to click on this particular link and you can see that you have successfully verified an email address so that email address can be used as a from i can use or i can send an email address from that particular email id that means whatever the emails i send they will be sent as so and so email address sent and what is the identity status verified so here if you click on this wait a second account dashboard if you click on the account dashboard and you can see this is in the sandbox environment that's why you can send only 200 emails per day per day you can send 200 emails if it is a production you can increase that to unlimited okay now here there are some settings available right what are the settings smtp endpoint this is the one which looks like smtp.gmail.com this is the SMTP server address. Let us note down the details. So here we have write down, right? So I can say SMTP server endpoint. Then what else we have to note down? Start TLS port, like port number for authentication. They should, they should use some kind of a port number, right? On such port, the service is running. You can use any of these three ports and then TLS wrapper port. If they are using TLS, then they have to use depending on the requirement, they can use either start TLS or TLS that depends on the requirement. Okay. And then we have to note down the username and password also. You have to note down the username and password for the verification purpose. Every email to be sent after successful verification, right? So from where we can get that? So here you can see create SMTP credentials, right? Create SMTP credentials. Same in the same page, account dashboard. If you scroll down, you can see the SMTP settings and then create SMTP credentials. Click on that. The create SMTP credentials is nothing but an IAM user. But that will be enabled only to send emails using the SES service. Okay, so here you can give some name. Any name that doesn't matter, I can say SES user. SES user, you can use any name. Click on create. Now here you can see user SMTP security credentials, a kind of a programmatic access, right? A kind looks like a kind of a programmatic access, username and the password. So these are the details which you have to share with the developer. 
they will use these credentials in their particular application so that their application will use amazon's ses to trigger the emails to anybody again how to test send a test email because we have to check whether those credentials or those details are working right so here there are two different things sandbox environment and production environment if your account is a production environment no need to do anything anything just we are done but we are using the sandbox environment so that every recipient every recipient must verify their email address so let us say if i would like to send an email to you using the ses you have to verify your email address how to verify first i will go to the ses how i verified the from email i have to verify the to email also i have to add your email address so that amazon will send one email link to your email so you have to click on that link and you will be verified and from that moment onwards amazon will allow me to send any emails to your email address that is the restriction in the sandbox but in the production there is no such restrictions and no need to verify the recipient email address our say sandbox environment right okay simple thing if you are working for a company that's it we are done with everything you can share these details and the developers will use these credentials but if i go to test email if i would like to test the email address so if you go with verified identities and this is the one right if i try to send test email it will not be able to send so here i can see scenario a uh, custom custom recipient or uh, any email address like abc at the rate gmail.com so test email some test email you will get an error message email address is not verified that means abc at the rate gmail.com is not yet verified because it is a sandbox environment if it is a production environment you don't get this message the email will be delivered to abc at the rate gmail.com so now i would like to send an email address to uh, some uh, what we call that any of your email address then i have to verify your email address then only the ses is able to send the emails and whenever you are using the ses you have to keep something in your mind about a reputation metrics do you know the meaning of a bounce what is the meaning of a bounce like check bounce if the check is not processed we call it a check bounce and what is the email bounce if the email is unable to deliver let us say uh, i am sending you uh, an email and if your email inbox is full like there is no space to receive the new emails then the email will be bounced so if you are having more emails as a bounce then your ses account will be blocked when the emails will be bounced if you are using some kind of marketing emails and if you are sending the emails to random email addresses then the bounce rate will be high right so in this dashboard on the left side you can see there is an option called reputation matrix click on the reputation matrix and you can see bounce rate what is the current bounce rate zero that means as of now on my account there is no email got bounced and compliance rate so let us say you receive an email from myself and if you click if you mark that email as a spam then my email is not compliant my smtp server is not compliant so if more people are marking your email or emails as a spam then your compliant rate will fall below the permitted values and your account will be suspended and here if you see at 5% at 5% you will receive a warning like for every 100 emails if five emails are getting bounced amazon will give you a warning and after crossing the 10% like if 10 emails are getting bounced for every 100 emails what you send then uh, your account will be at risk at any time your account might be suspended in the same way with the compliant rate if the compliant rate is 0.1 like for every 1000 emails if one user is marking your email as a spam you will get a warning for every 1000 emails you send 
if five people are marking your email as a spam then your account will be at risk so always you have to be very careful with using the ses if you are sending some kind of a marketing emails or some fish, uh, spam spamming emails then your account will be get suspended every day you have to monitor this what is the bounce rate if the bounce rate is exceeding then you have to take care about not sending the emails to that particular email addresses okay right this is about the ses and final application service is elastic transcoder we don't use that in the olden days uh, uh, like what we call that the media companies or the media streaming companies will use that elastic transcoder but you have to know about what is that elastic transcoder because in the certification they might ask you they might give you some kind of a question about this so elastic transcoder is an aws managed service to convert the media files from one format to another format let us say the youtube is there right based on your uh, uh, what we call that based on your device and based on your internet speed the resolution of the video will be changed right sometimes you might get 1080 and if your if your video doesn't support 4k videos it will not display the 4k resolution right so based on your devices amazon has to maintain different versions of the same video like while streaming or before streaming they they have to maintain multiple types of the media file like 3 gp format or hd video or a regular normal videos different different formats so this elastic transcoder will be used to convert your media file from one format to another format like you can convert the hd 4k video into 3 gp video or 4k video into a regular mp eg video or mp4 or mp3 also but this is not a free service amazon will charge you for converting the media files based on two different parameters one is the length of the video the length of the media file and the type of the media file from which type to which type you are converting if you are converting from 4k to mp3 they might charge you at different charges if you are converting from 4k to like a 3 gp like a smaller resolution video then they might charge you a different amount so mostly this elastic transcoder this service can be used by media streaming companies to deliver the different formats of videos based on the end user devices aws will charge for using the elastic transcoder based on two parameters the first one is length of the media file like is it a 1 1 minute video or 10 minutes video or 20 minutes video and the file format or we can say file conversion from which format to which format based on from and to of the video type media type and the length of the media file let us say if you are converting uh, what we call that uh, a video from HK, uh, hd to 3 gp so they have some fixed fixed pricing like every minute 1 dollar and if you are converting 10 minutes video then you will be charged 10 dollars if you are converting hd video to mpeg a normal regular video then the cost will be 2 dollars per minute and you have converted 5 minutes video or 10 minutes video then you will be charged 20 dollars based on these two values 
the charges for the elastic transcoder service will be applicable and sns is a free data eligible yes sqs yes but there with some limitations with some limitations like i think by using sns you can send 1000 email notifications per month 1000 email notifications let me show you that just for any service if you would like to check the free data eligibility you have to go to aws.amazon.com forward slash free and here if i type s n yes and 1 million publishers not 1000 1 million publishers ah uh, sorry i clicked on that 1 million request free 1 million request free and only to the 1000 email addresses if you add more than 1000 email addresses for all additional email addresses you will be charged and let us check about the SQS. 1 million request. 1 million requests are free. And what is the other one? SES. 62,000 outbound messages per month. You can send 62,000 messages outbound. If you send more than 62,000 per month, then you will be charged. And the transcoder, right? Elastic transcoder. 20 minutes of audio transcoding is free. 20 minutes of SD video transcoding. SD means a regular video. And 10 minutes of HD. These are the free. These are the free. If you exceed these values, you will be charged. Okay. Right. So these are about the application services. And theoretically, you have to be good in all these things because you might expect at least one question on all these four. Like all these four together, you can expect one question. 90% you will get a question on SQES, SQES or SES. Elastic transcoder that might not be covered generally. The remaining three, theoretically, you have to be, uh, you have to be aware of like how they will work. Most of the people will get confused between SNS and SQS. One is a push based service and the other one is a poll based service. SNS will send the messages, but SQS will never send any messages. It will maintain all the messages in a queue and the receiver will come and they will pick the messages. That's how the uh, SNS and SQS will work. You must be aware of the difference between the SNS and SQS. 80% chances to get a question on SQS and the remaining 20% uh, out of 20, 15, 15% on SNS and SES, only 5% chances to get a question on elastic transport. Okay, right. So this is about the application services. And are you guys clear or any questions on this? Okay, so if you guys are clear, uh, let us stop the session here. Uh, today is Friday, right? Okay. Then tomorrow we can go with a cloud formation service, which is a kind of infrastructure as a service that is also a DevOps tool. So we will use some kind of a sample template to deploy the infrastructure automatically. Like based on the code, the infrastructure will be created like EC2 instance creation, VPC creation. Everything can be created with simple clicks. Okay, that will be a cloud formation, uh, which we will cover in the tomorrow's session. And for the solutions architect, that is not required. But we will see how the sample template looks like. And we will modify the template. Like we will uh, customize the template. And we can discuss about those things. Okay, uh, any questions? What is the difference between AWS and DevOps? DevOps is a kind of uh, uh, combination of tools. AWS is a platform. On that AWS platform, you can do development, you can do testing, you can do DevOps, you can do anything. AWS, you cannot uh, maintain in your office, right? You cannot implement AWS in your laptop. 
DevOps, you can do on your locally or cloud also. Java is there. What is the difference between AWS and Java? You cannot compare, right? By using Java, you can design applications and that application can run in your office or in the cloud. DevOps will be used to integrate the development and operations. Development and operations, right? So the operations can be in your office or it can be in the cloud. It can be in the AWS cloud or Azure cloud, right? Okay. And one more thing, uh, I haven't shown like how to convert that uh, sandbox environment into the production environment, right? So let me clear, uh, let me show you quickly, which will not take one minute. Having a valid domain name, we cannot convert it, but I will show you like how to do that. Just go to the SES. Navigate to SES and go to the account dashboard. So here you can see request production access, right? You have to click on that. And what is the purpose of this SES? Are you using marketing or transactional? Generally, every company will use for transaction purpose, like sending the monitoring alerts or send uh, configuring with your applications so that whenever some backup job is done, an email to be delivered, right? That email will be delivered using these credentials. You can select either, either marketing or transactional. And here you have to provide your website URL of your company. And in the description, you have to type the description for what purpose you are using that. You can write like to receive the monitoring alerts. We have some monitoring tools and to configure the monitoring tools to trigger uh, alert notifications whenever something is wrong that you can describe. And here you can use some additional contact if required, or you can ignore that. And then you have to acknowledge and you have to click on submit request. Amazon will review and they will act, uh, convert your sandbox environment into production. If I do this in Northern Virginia, the same thing will be done in all the regions. No, you have to enable in each and every region. The same SES is available in every region. So in which region you would like to use in that region, you have to enable. Okay. All right. Um, any other questions? Uh, whatever we have discussed as of now, everything we need to cover except the elastic pin start. Except Elastic Beanstack, every topic is required for the solutions architect. So did I mention any topic which is not required apart from Elastic Beanstack? No, only for Elastic Beanstack I mentioned, right? Yes. And going forward, I will tell you if uh, most of the topics which we are going to discuss is not required for the solutions architect, like the cloud formation. I will mention those topic names. Okay, that they are not required for the certification point of view. Uh, what is that cloud formation is one lambda is there that is also not required for us that is a developer tool sometimes devops also will use that lambda like uh, by using the lambda they will use, do some kind of api calls to trigger something to start or to stop something or they will trigger some kind of functions using the lambda that is also not required for the solutions architect Okay, then uh, if you guys are clear, you guys can leave. Uh, if you have any questions, just you can wait. We can continue tomorrow. Great morning, yes.